Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to register to the Nagoya University G30 International Program Online Application System. Start by going to our website admissions.g30.nagoya-u.ac.jp. Then click on the admissions tab here. Today, I will be showing you how to apply to the undergraduate program. You can also apply to the graduate program online, but the process and necessary documents are slightly different for each individual program. If you are interested in the graduate school programs, you can check out the details here. But for the undergraduate program, please click here. Here, you can see the admission requirements. Please read this document carefully before filling in your online application. To register to the online application, please click here. Here you can see the online application system page with all of the important dates. As you can see, there are two rounds of applications. The first round is from November to December and the second round from January to February. These dates will be updated once the portal opens. Note that only some programs are available in the second round of applications, so we recommend you to apply during the first round. At this moment, both application periods are not open, so you are not able to register to the online system. However, once the application period begins, you can register to the system by typing in your email address here. Once you click Create, you should receive an account ID and password and a link to the online application system to your email. If you didn't receive the email, please check the junk mail folder of your email account. So once you've registered and clicked on the link in your email, you should be able to see your application page. Here on the top, you can see the message board, which you can use to communicate with the admissions office. Next, you have a section showing your application status. You will become an official applicant once you've completed the application and paid the application fee. If the admission office notices that there is some information of documents missing from your application, they will list them here. And here you can see the time remaining until the application deadline. We strongly recommend you submitting your application early as that gives us time to review your application and to let you know if something is missing. Today we will go over only the first step of the application process. Students who are selected for the second interview round will be informed individually later on. To start filling in the application, click on the Apply icon here. Now here you can see the online application flow. There are six forms that you need to fill in and then a section where you can upload all of your application documents. Then there is a short survey we would like you to fill out. Finally, on the last page, you can review your application and declare that all the information you've provided is correct. There is also a link to the payment page there. In the first form, just fill in your personal information and choose a program you would like to apply for. Note that a single applicant can apply only to one program each year. Please make sure to write your name as it is written in your passport. In some cases, students might not have a last name, just a series of first names. In that case, just type in a dash or a hyphen in the family name section. You cannot leave any of the required sections empty, so please fill in all of the required sections. Remember to click on Save at the end of the form before moving on to the next form. In the second form, you need to fill in your academic qualifications starting from first grade. If you finished all 12 years in one school or in one institution, you can just fill in the first slot. If you have attended more than three schools, you can add forms here. Some students might not remember which month they graduated. In that case, you can type in a rough estimate of the graduation month. What is important is that you make sure that you fill in the years so that it shows that you've finished 12 years of education. The next sections you can fill in the following sections if they are applicable to you. For example, you've attended another university before or if you have some other qualifications of university interest, such as an IB degree or GCE A-level results or expected results, you can fill in that information here. And then make sure to click Save. 
Now, Form 3 is also not mandatory. It is not customary in all countries to take standardized tests. However, if in any way possible, we strongly recommend applicants to submit some form of standardized test results, such as SAT scores. If you've taken a standardized test, but the test results are not yet available, you can leave the score section blank. Once you've filled in all the information that applies to you, click on Save. Form 4, however, is mandatory for everybody. Here, you need to fill in your English language proficiency qualifications. Students who have attended a high school whose medium of instruction is English can click on the first option here. These students do not need to submit English proficiency test scores. However, you do need to submit a certificate from your school stating that your classes were conducted in English. There is also a form on our website that your school can fill out instead. If you didn't receive your schooling in English, you need to click on the second option here and submit English proficiency test scores. You can check which English proficiency test scores we accept by clicking on Appendix 1 here. Appendix 1 is also found inside the Application Guidelines PDF on our website. You can fill in these other sections here if they are applicable to you and then click on Save. In Form 5, you need to fill in the information of the two teachers or counselors that have agreed to recommend you. Note that they need to be from your high school. People like sports coaches and etc. are not applicable here. Also, for several G30 majors, the teaching subject of Referee 1 is specified in the application requirements in Appendix 2. Please read the detailed instructions here. Here, you can choose how to submit your reference letters. We strongly recommend that you submit the reference letters online through this system. However, before you fill in this section, it is important that you inform the referees in advance and obtain their approval. You should let them know that once you fill in the online application, they will be receiving an email from the online application system asking them to fill in the recommendation form in a timely manner. If the reference letter is submitted after the application period is over, the application will be automatically rejected. We recommend you to double check with your teacher that they have received the recommendation email and submitted the recommendation letter. If they haven't received the recommendation letter, please ask them to check the junk mail folder in their email. Please note that you must input your teacher's school email address and not a personal one. One very important point is that you make sure that the email address is written correctly. Once you click on the request here, you cannot make changes to the section, so please make sure that the information is correct. And the same here for Referee B. And then click on Save. Next, we move on to Form 6, Scholarship Information and Additional Information. All applicants are automatically considered for the Nagoya University G30 Undergraduate Scholarship. Leave it unchecked if you want to be considered for this scholarship. And then down here, you have a free section for additional information. Here you can give some further information about the sections that you just filled in, like about your educational history or something else that relates to your intended major subject, such as voluntary work activity or participation in a conference. Again, click on Save. Finally, once you've filled in Forms 1 through 6, you can move on to uploading all the necessary files. Before you start uploading your files, read these instructions carefully. In the first section here, you can download the templates of some of the application documents that we have made available. It is possible that your school might have another type of prospective graduation certificate that they issue. Feel free to submit that instead of this one. However, make sure that all submitted documents are written in English or come with an English translation. In any case, download these files, fill them up, and upload them here by clicking on this button. Once you've chosen the file, remember to click on the yellow Upload button to finish saving the files in the online application system. Most of the files that you upload should be in PDF format, and you can upload only one file in each section. So, if your academic transcript consists of three separate pages, please combine them all in one three-page PDF file. Your picture needs to be uploaded as a PNG or JPEG file. 
One last thing I'd like to mention is about this annual income statement form here. This only needs to be uploaded if you want to be considered for the scholarship. This can be, for example, a copy of your parents' bank statement or an annual income statement from your sponsor's company. And then click Save. Now that you've filled in most of the application, we would like you to answer this short survey. Your answers really help us to develop the program. Finally, once you've saved your survey answers, you can move on to the final section where you can review and check your whole application. If there is something missing, you can still go back and modify your application. Scroll on down to the checklist of registration. If you have uploaded all files successfully, then these two boxes will have a check mark. If you're missing any documents, the boxes will be empty. If everything looks fine, you can move on to agree with the declaration below and complete your application by clicking complete. Note that after you click complete, you will not be able to modify the application yourself anymore. Once the application is finished, please proceed to pay the application fee. Please finish this step as soon as you can, as the application and documents will not be processed before the payment is made. If you submit your application early, the admissions office will have time to check your application and let you know if, if some information is missing. If you submit the application at the last minute, then there will be no time for revisions. I hope this short tutorial was helpful. I wish you all good luck with the application process.